Okay, today we are going to be doing the Chapter 9 review. Um, this is going to be abbreviated, meaning you need to make sure that you're doing those homework problems um, and checking your answers in the back of the book, as well as doing this. Um, the review we're going to do in class is going to be using Clicker, so you'll be getting a review in three different ways. Okay. Um, what's going to be important in this chapter is making sure you are finding the correct thing and using the correct methods. We learned about several different methods within this, within this chapter. Um, and the first one is just probability of simple events. So a bag of animal crackers contains five monkeys, four giraffes, six elephants, and three tigers. Suppose you draw a cracker at random. Find the probability of each simple event. Now we need to know how many total um, animals we have here. So you have 5 plus 4, which is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So we have 18 total. So first I'm going to find the probability of getting a monkey, okay, getting pulling a monkey out of these bag of animal crackers. Fix this real quick here. There we go. Okay, so I know it's going to be out of 18 total. And there are five monkey animal crackers. I can't simplify and you're done. Okay, so simple events is just taking the number of favorable outcomes over the number of total. So for the number two, not a giraffe, once again, it's out of 18. And you're doing everything but a giraffe. So there's four giraffes. So if I take 18 minus four, you get 14, which means there's 14 animals that are not giraffes. Another way to do that is to take five plus 6 plus 3, you would also get 14. Okay, now we're going to simplify. Simplify by 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And my answer is 7 ninths. So once again, that's a probability of a simple event. All right, for each situation, find the sample space using a table or tree diagram. We're going to do rolling a number cube and tossing a coin. So on a number cube, I'm going to move this a little bit, I have a little bit more room. Uh, I have six different numbers, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is my number cube. And then I'm going to toss a coin. So out of each one, I'm going to put the outcomes that I would have on my coin, which would be heads or tails, heads and tails heads and tails, heads and tails, okay, to the end. Now my sample space, remember, is going to be all the outcomes. So I have one heads, one tails, two heads, two tails, three heads, three tails, four heads, four tails, five heads, five tails, six heads, and six tails. This is your sample space. Okay, so the sample space is not only telling me the number of outcomes, but what those actual outcomes would be. Okay, now in number four it says use fundamental counting principle to find the number of outcomes. So if I do not want a sample space and I just want to basically find the number of outcomes, you're going to take the number of outcomes on your cube, and there are six, oops, and then the number of outcomes on your coin, and there are two, and you just simply multiply them together to find the number of outcomes. And I can check and see that I did this correctly just by counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So it shows me that, yes, I did find the correct number of outcomes. Um, you do not, of course, have to make a tree diagram if you're just finding the basic number of outcomes. You can always just use the fundamental counting principle. But if it asks for a sample space, you have to list all of the outcomes. That's very, very important. Okay, and how many ways can a family arrange themselves in a line for a family portrait? And how many ways can a family, this is supposed to say a five. Okay, now if I am lining these people up, um, and I want to know the number of ways, then this is going to be permutation. Order does matter, 
um, where you're sitting in the picture is obviously going to change the picture, so it's going to be very different, okay, in what way you're ordered. So I have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This is a permutation because order does matter. Okay, another way we've talked about doing this is taking 5 factorial. Either way, you're going to get the same thing. So 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120, and then times 1 is 120 as well. So there's 120 different outcomes, different ways you can arrange these five people. Number 6, in how many ways can a coach select three players from a roster of nine? Okay, does the order in which they select these three players matter? No, it does not. Okay, this is not talking about a batting order. It's not talking about who's going to run first, second, or third. It's just picking three people. So whether I pick Bill, John, and Jimmy, it's the same thing as picking Jimmy, John, and Bill. Okay? Does not make a difference at all. So this is what we call a combination. So remember when you do a combination, it's going to be more like a division problem. So I'm picking three players. So I'm going to choose three from nine. So for the first person I pick, I'm going to have nine to choose from, and then eight, and then seven. And I'm going to stop because I'm only picking three players. And then I'm going to divide by one, two, three, factorial. Okay, which remember is three times two times one. It's easy. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to get my calculator out. And I'm going to first do 9 times 8 times 7, 9 times 8 times 7, which is 504. And then I'm going to do 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. 504 divided by 6 is 84, so there's going to be 84 outcomes in this situation. Okay, so notice how this is very different than just doing a normal permutation. <clears throat> if I was doing a permutation, it would just be this top part. You're not dividing by that number that you're choosing factorial. Okay. Next one, if a spinner has four equal sections labeled one through four, what is the theoretical probability of landing on a two? Theoretical comes from, in theory, what should happen. So I have four different outcomes, four different sections, and how many of them is a two? One. That is theoretical. Basically, it's finding the probability of a simple event. Now, number eight gives us information. If you landed on one three times, two three times, three four times, and four one time, what is the experimental probability you will land on a two? So experimental probability, which I spelled wrong, is um, going to be from my experiment. What did I do within the experiment? So within the experiment, I spun how many times? Three plus three is six, plus four is ten, plus one is eleven. So I spun my spinner eleven times. Now you're going to figure out how many of those times I actually landed on a two. Well, I landed on a two three times. I can't simplify, and that's my experimental probability. Okay? So experimental comes from your experiment. Theoretical whether they do an experiment or not is, in theory, what should happen. If I have four sections and one of them is a two, then one out of four times you should land on a two. Okay? There is a big difference. And our last problem. A computer randomly generates a digit from zero to nine. Find the probability that an odd number or the number eight is generated. If I'm doing an or, Okay, compound event, this is going to be disjoint. And if you look at your no notes, when you do a disjoint, you do the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, you're adding them. Whereas if it was an independent, you would multiply, or a dependent, you would multiply. Okay, so the probability that I'm going to land on an odd number for my digits, I have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So that's 5 out of 10 of my digits would be odd, plus the number 8. 1 out of 10 would be 8. There's only one 8 out of 10 digits. I'm going to add them together. 5 plus 1 is 6. The 10 remains the same, and then I'm going to simplify. And I get 3 
fifths as my solution. Okay, so once again, this is a brief overview. Um, we're doing review um, today in class with doing our worksheet. Tomorrow we'll be doing a review with the clickers. All right, so we have several different forms of review. Make sure you're doing your best you can in order to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of this chapter. As always, thanks for watching.